Hello and welcome to another video by me, The Tank Index. Today I'm going to talk about another Japanese tank, the Type 89 Igo, which apart from the, um, let's see, apart from the, really the Renault NC series and the Cardinal Tankette, um, is the first real tank, you know, not a Tankette, not a version of World War One tank. The first interwar tank we're going to talk about that really fought in World War Two to not very good success, but I think this is a really interesting tank. Um, and, you know, yeah, I just want to talk about it, so... On to the backstory, this project evolved from the first Japanese tank, the Type 87 Chi, also known as Experimental Tank Number 1. While a good first attempt, the Imperial Japanese General Staff wanted a lighter tank that weighed around 10 tons instead of the Type 87's 20. It would be modeled for the Vickers Medium Mark C, which was bought by Japan in March of 1927. The first version of the vehicle, the Type A Igo, had a crew of four with a commander gunner, loader, with a commander slash gunner, a loader, a driver, and a hull gunner. Um, it had a Type 90 57 mm main gun, as well as two 6.5 mm Type 91 machine guns. In the back of the turret, and another on the hull. Um, you know, which is which is actually kind of weird um, machine gun place to be used. You have one in the hull, which is obviously good in attacking frontal positions, but I guess they hadn't really thought of a coaxial machine gun yet. Because, I mean, it's kind of weird to have your primary machine gun be in the hull instead of a turret. And then your turreted one, I mean, it wouldn't be able to shoot down infantry unless they were unless they were behind you somehow. Which, I mean, if there's infantry behind you, I mean, that's not exactly a good thing. Um, but, you know, the gun was quite potent, being able to penetrate 20 millimeters of armor at 500 meters. I mean, for the time, I mean, like, it had more firepower than really any tank had and could destroy really any armor they had. Um, the main gun carried a good 100 rounds with a 1,000 for the machine guns. Um, you know, later, when it forced into service in World War II, it was even given high-explosive anti-tank rounds or heat rounds to help against incoming Allied tanks, primarily the Americans, which, I mean, it probably helped somewhat, but at that point, I mean, <sighs> Um, instead of having soft iron armor like the Type 87, it used steel plate labeled Niseko Steel. Um, it had a rear-drive sprocket and nine bogies in pairs. But it did lack a radio, having to communicate with outmoded tactics like signal flags. Um, some had two spotlights for night operations, as seen to the right. Um, and some tanks would later be given some, you know, uh, radios from 19 th made in 1934, which would weigh, you know, nearly 200 pounds and only really having a range of 0.6 miles. Um, which also had a 30-foot antenna, though, which so it had some drawbacks. The 100-horsepower gasoline engine let it go about 10 miles an hour, which is... I mean, it's okay. I am. Mean, it's more than the FT, but at the same time, that's from World War One. I. I mean, the Vid Vickers Medium Mark One and Two could go thirteen or fifteen miles an hour. So this thing was definitely slower. Um, but I mean, for a gun that potent, I guess it evens out. It weighed thirteen to fourteen tons with six point seventeen millimeters of armor, which was honestly much more than the worldwide competition. You know, this was sort of the medium tank, or you know, the infantry tank as it was called, which usually weighed like seven tons maybe. So I mean, you know, this was something else. Um, in April of 1928, the new light design was finished. Um, the prototype was finished by the next year and designated another you know, Type 89, though it was reclassified as a medium tank due to weighing around 13 to 14 tons. Since the Army's Sagami arsenal didn't have the production to actually m m mass produce the tanks, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, which you probably know from cars, got a contract for mass production. Production would begin in 1931 and it would become the main tank of the Japanese Army. Um, Oh no, cut through the image by accident, sorry guys. The army did quite like the tank, to be honest, um, especially over its last attempt or the old Great War veteran still in, in its inventory. Um, however, there were some problems, including there was actually a small hole under the mantle that could um, actually allow rifle fire to enter the turret, which is pretty bad. And the speed was also pretty low. Um, so after production started, work on the tank would continue leading to the Type 89B model. Um, the Type 89A Igo... Uh, the Type 89B, I should have written B, or sorry, no, no, okay, I'm sorry. The Type 89A Aigo Ko model was superseded by a Type 89B Aigo Otsu model. It had a new asymmetric gun turret, as you can see here, I mean, it kind of looks pretty wacky here, um, which did mean that the machine gun was moved to the left of the turret, I think, or maybe the left of the hull, I'm not sure, I think it was moved to the left of the turret, um, uh, you know, which is pretty interesting. Um, previously, the frontal armor was multiple plates. Now it's one slow piece of metal, which is pretty good. 
Um, the engine was changed to a diesel engine over gasoline, making it the first mass-produced tank using a diesel engine, which did allow for a better fuel economy, which, I mean, for the Japanese, was a pretty big deal. Um, this allowed it to go a much better 16 miles per hour and up to 110 miles. Um, as for its combat history, due to the Japanese war in China, this tank got a swift baptism of firemen. Once they got them out in sufficient numbers, they were being used. Um, it first really saw use in the first battle of Shanghai in 1932, when the gun was very successfully able to destroy machine gun nests, um, pillboxes, and its armor did stop small arms fire, which is what it was made for. In 1933, Japan created its first independent armor force, having 60 Type 89 spread across three regiments, with each regiment having two companies with 10 tanks each. Um, three more regiments were formed the next year, so, you know, about 120 tanks, that's pretty good. Um, it was used as an infantry support role in the Second Sino-Japanese War and in various campaigns in China after 1937. Um, though there are some notes about China, it seems impressive, but you really have to take it into context about the service in China. The Chinese National Army only had three tank battalions. These were either used Panzer 1s or CB-33s, which were tank cats. And yes, they are German and Italian tanks, even though they were allied in World War II. Beforehand, the Germans were actively training Chinese troops. Or, you know, a much smaller number of Vickers tanks. So, they rarely saw service against armor that could actually hurt them. And primarily fought against disorganized rebel groups or tanks without infantry support. So, you know, take that into account with this tank. Though, you know, its service is still pretty admirable. Um, the tank would fight admirably at Kalkengal against the Soviets in border skirmishes. So, that's a whole nother video. Um, while by 1942, these tanks were definitely slowly being taken out of the front lines and replaced in newer models such as you know it's replacing the type 97 many still did see action they fought in burma malaya and the philippines um as well as continuing to be used in china you know a lot of them never really left china they were often used as static defense positions in japanese occupied islands but honestly they were just outmatched by american tanks i mean at that point you had the sherman fighting there by by the time the sherman is up against these tanks i mean you're screwed no matter how many heat rounds you give them the final usage of these tanks would actually be in the beginning of stages of the first Indochina War as a thrown together French armored force called the Commando Blindu du Combage, which really mainly used old Japanese tanks that were still there, um, and had one 89B in it, seen here on the left. In Japanese service, it would be used in 15 units as well as the naval landing tank school. So, on the final assessments, on its introduction, the Type 89 Igo was a really good tank, and much better than the prototype model before it. While it did have some problems with the low speed, the B variant definitely fixed that problem along with giving it a diesel engine, which was really useful with Japan's overall fuel shortage. Um, it really improved its fuel economy. For the period, it was the main Japanese medium tank up to 1937. It really was a pretty decent tank. I mean, I don't really know. It was a good tank when it was supposed to be used, um, especially considering that its opponents really weren't much competition. However, after 1937 and into World War II, it really wasn't up to snuff anymore, and it was pretty poor. Though, I can't really blame the tank for being forced into service that much later. I mean, you have to really consider, this was a, a late 1920s, early 1930s design. I mean, 10 years later, I can't really blame it for not holding up well. Um, all in all, though, it was not that bad a tank, with a short barrel, though powerful gun. Um, next time, we're going to talk about Germans. Yay!